So we've made it to the year 2020, and I'm gonna give you my picks for my 10 most anticipated movies of the year. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean, and I started this channel because I was driving everyone around me crazy talking about movies way too much. If you can relate, you're probably in the right place. Consider clicking that subscribe button. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your picks for your most anticipated movies of 2020. As I go into this, I looked at a list of about 100 movies. I whittled it down to a list of about 30, and then I went even shorter down to my top 10, plus about eight honorable mentions that I'll share with you. So there's a lot of movies I'm excited about, so just because I didn't mention mention something doesn't mean I forgot it or I'm not excited about it. I can only talk about so many movies in this. With that said, let's get started with some runner-ups. Kicking things off, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. The Conjuring franchise as a whole is pretty hit or miss, but the main Conjuring films are both really good. If James Wan was returning to direct this film, it would be in my top 10. Then we've got Mulan, the live action remake. I'm not crazy about how many Disney live action remakes that they're doing, but this one seems like the source material, both the Disney original as well as the original folklore, Ends itself very well to a big epic live action film. Then we have, then we have Denny Villeneuve's Dune. He's one of the most interesting directors working right now. I actually haven't seen or read any of the previous versions of Dune, so I don't know the source material at all, but because he's involved in the cast, of course it gets a mention. And finally, Next Goal wins a sports movie from Taika Waititi. He is all over the place with his projects, and I love that about him. None of them are like the previous one. He tries different things and always brings his distinct flavor to it. So what will he do with the sports movie? I have no idea, but I'm very excited to see. With that said, let's get started. Kicking things off at number 10 is Pixar's Soul. This feels like a return to Pixar doing strange, weird, experimental films where they take complex ideas and they package them in a way that can be insightful for adults but also be understood by children. The trailer that they put out, while on a plot level being totally different from Inside Out, kind of reminded me of the vibe of that film. I loved how Inside Out managed to take the complexities of our emotions as well as puberty and package them in a way that my kids could love it. That's what this feels like, except with this concept of life, death, afterlife. No idea what they're gonna do with all of this and how music ties into it, but it's Pixar. They've got a great track record and I love it when they take risks. Next up is A Quiet Place Part Two. As of the time that I'm filming this, I still actually haven't watched the trailer for it, even though it dropped yesterday. In fact, I'm hoping to not actually watch it until tonight. I'm hoping it plays in front of the grudge. I prefer to watch trailers on the big screen. So as I go into this, I'm really evaluating purely by how much I loved the first film and the ability of John Krasinski to tell a compelling family drama that kept you on the edge of your seat and had a clever, horror thriller gimmick inside of it. The idea that we're getting more of that in this world, very excited about all of that. Once again, I haven't watched the trailer, so I don't, maybe I'll watch the trailer and be like, oh, this looks awful. Or maybe I'll be like, this should have been number two on my list. I don't know. Hopefully tonight I will find out. Coming in at number eight is The Eternals. Obviously, I absolutely love the MCU and I love it when they go weird, wacky, and strange in outer space. Guardians of the Galaxy is like a personal favorite of mine. So the idea that we're going cosmic once again has me very fascinated at what we're going to see inside of this film. I'm not familiar with the comic book material. Obviously, we haven't seen a trailer yet. So I really do not know what to expect from this film other than an absolutely jacked Kumal Nanjiani who put some pictures out a couple weeks back of him just absolutely shredded. So this is one of those movies that has me so curious as to what it's gonna be, how it's gonna tie into the grander MCU. Is it gonna tie into kind of our post Endgame world or is it gonna kind of stand alone? Will it set up our next big bad? I have absolutely no idea, but this is a movie I can't wait to see. Number seven, The Way Back, a sports drama from Gavin O'Connor. If you don't know one of my 
absolute favorite films from the last decade was Warrior, and it was directed by Gavin O'Connor, and it's a sports drama. In the lead on this one is Ben Affleck, so naturally that has me kind of curious, and the themes inside of it seems like ones that would resonate with me. So as soon as I saw that one of my favorite directors who does sports dramas is returning to that genre with Ben Affleck in the lead, themes that typically kind of pull at my heartstrings really nicely, immediately this was a movie that made its way into my top 10. Then we have Black Widow. Once again, I love the MCU, and Black Widow is finally getting her time in the lead. I'm a little bit interested in this one as to exactly what it's going to be as Spoiler alert, she died in Endgame, so we're doing a prequel. It's set between Civil War and Infinity War, and we're gonna see what she was up to in that window of time and kind of dive into really her as a standalone character, not as her a member of the Avengers. All of that has me fascinated. The trailer dropped about a month ago and it hit all the right notes for me. It seemed to set the tone, the vibe, kind of had this Jason Bourne inside of the MCU vibe. One of the things the MCU does really nicely is all of them feel like MCU films while also tying to other genres. This is our spy movie, our non, I guess we kind of had one with Winter Soldier, but that was like a political thriller. This seems like a Jason Bourne spy movie. All that sounds great to me. I would love the idea of it. The little moments we got with David Harbour seemed like a really nice touch. So of course, naturally, can't wait to see this one. Real quick before I give you my top five, here's four more honorable mentions. First up is Venom 2. Now I wasn't crazy about the first Venom, I kind of thought it was a mess, but it was actually a very entertaining mess that had a great rela relationship between Eddie Brock and Venom, and I would love to see more of that bromance in the future. So with a script that's a little bit better formed, you could make a Venom movie that I really enjoyed out of the pieces that they had there. So naturally Venom 2 is one that I want to check out. Next up, we're gonna have Godzilla vs. King Kong. This one was supposed to come out just a couple months from now and then it got delayed to the end of the year. Now, I don't think that this MonsterVerse has been awesome, but they have been big fun movies where big monsters <laughs> destroy cities. So having them actually clash with one another, I'm totally on board. These are films to me that like at their worst, they're just fun Taco Bell movies. They're fun, easy to consume, fast food entertainment at the cinema. Then we're gonna have Halloween Kills. I 80% really enjoyed the Halloween movie from a year ago and what they did with it. Just a couple of odd choices that I thought were a little bit off-putting, but in general, I dug the tone, the vibe of it, the violence, this version of Laurie Strode. So getting more of it, I am on board. And finally, Last Night in Soho. It's supposed to be a psychological time travel horror film from Edgar Wright. I'm sold. Kicking off our top five is Wonder Woman 1984. Like most people, I really dug the first Wonder Woman film. It had things to say, it could be funny, the action was really good, and I just thought Gal Gadot was just so charming in the role. So naturally, I can't wait to see a sequel to it. They dropped the trailer just a few weeks back, and Wow, it's one of the trailers just makes an impact, catches your attention immediately because it has what you liked from the first film, but feels like such a tonal shift and it's so much more vibrant and lively as it's not set during the depressing First World War and instead is set during the 1980s that were known for their extravagance in nature. So naturally, they lend themselves to the flavor that you got in this trailer. The humor seemed to work. I loved a bunch of the action shots inside of it. Though, I am very worried about Mr. Pine returning to the film and how they're gonna pull that off. Will it work? I mean, I dug their relationship. I love that we're seeing more of them, but for me to buy into the movie, I gotta buy into the reason that he came back and how they brought him back. Hopefully that works, cause I had a lot of fun with this trailer. Number four, No Time to Die, our final Bond film from Daniel Craig. I have really enjoyed him as James Bond in these films. His movies, however, have been pretty hit or miss for me. They're a lot like the 1980s Star Trek movies where the odd films were really bad and the even films were really good, except the reverse of that. The odd Daniel Craig Bond films are really good, and this being the fifth one, According to the formula, this should be another fantastic James Bond film with Daniel Craig in the lead. I dug what they were going for in the trailer and that they have very much this kind of art flowing throughout the entire films. The themes seem to work. There's, I mean, it just looks gorgeous and it seemed like there's some very cool action sequences. So 
I'm feeling like we're gonna end his reign as James Bond on a high note. Real quick, before I give you my top three, remember to share your picks down below in the comment section. Remember, my list isn't the right list. These are just the ones I'm most interested in, and I would love to see which ones you're most interested in. Also, you can check out my end of the year lists, all the ones that I did about best movies, most disappointing movies, the comic book movies, all that stuff to close out 2019, right up here in this playlist. If you enjoyed this video, there is something up there that you'll love. In third place, Ghost Ghostbusters Afterlife. Little story about the Ghostbusters franchise. Back in the summer of 2016, I didn't have a job. Went on a date night to go see the reboot of Ghostbusters with my wife. Saw it. I was actually kind of middle of the road on it. I didn't think it was the worst thing ever. Certainly didn't love it. I went, hey, maybe I should post a review of Ghostbusters and see what happens. Well, here we are three and a half years later, and now I'm a full-time movie critic because of the Ghostbusters reboot. So naturally, I feel indebted to the Ghostbusters franchise. Beyond that, I grew up watching the animated show, watching, of course, the original films, and always been a fan of this franchise in all of its different forms, had all the toys growing up. Uh, and so naturally, a new movie's coming out that's continuing the continuity of the original. You got the son of the director of the original film, so it very much feels kind of that passing of the torch. I dig all of that. And then our trailer dropped about a month ago, and they're doing something different with it. And I really like that, that we're not just kind of doing New York City, forming the business, but taking the mythology and exploring it in all kinds of different ways and what are ghosts like in this world when you're not in New York City. All that sounds great to me. I love Paul Rudd and that he's in this, but not necessarily the obvious lead in it. I think that's a great choice. Doug the trailer, cannot wait to see this film. My runner up is Top Gun Maverick. Given all the movies on this list, the honorable mentions, and all the films I haven't even included in this video, I'm as shocked as anyone that this is my runner-up. But the two trailers that they've put out have absolutely touched all of the right nostalgia buttons to kind of like draw me in, and I just can't wait to see Maverick once again and kind of continue this story. Some of my earliest childhood memories are of my family sitting down to watch Top Gun together, and then the sex scene happened, and they're like, get out of here, get out of here, and rushed me out of the room. So I was curious, like, what just happened? And they're like, they kissed. And that's the story about how I learned about the birds and the bees and where babies come from. But this trailer, or both trailers, have absolutely delivered exactly what I needed to get excited about this. I'm the target audience. The trailers are absolutely doing all the right things to make me say, I need to see this movie now. But coming in in first place is Tenet, the new Christopher Nolan film. He is, of course, one of my favorite directors of the 21st century. He's one of the directors that got me into actually loving films on a deeper level beyond just blockbusters. I saw Memento in the theater right when it first came out, and I've been a big fan of his work ever since then, and he has not let me down since. Not all of his films are absolute masterpieces, but even when he fails, he fails forward. He's always ambitious, has ideas, and he's doing interesting things with his film. And this film seems to be right in line with everything else of exploring ideas inside of it, um, having great action, of course, with fantastic actors inside of it. Seem kind of in the vibe of Inception, which it's one of my favorite films from him. When it's Nolan, I always am going to be pumped and excited, and everything I've heard and seen about this film makes me think it is not gonna let me down. So it comes in at number one. Remember, you can check out my end of the year list from 2019 right over there in that playlist. Thank you so much for watching, and keep talking movies too much.